Hi, my name is Gigi and I'm from Illinois. Before I continue, please like and subscribe. Ever since I can remember, I have loved cars. I guess it's because my dad is a professional racer. I grew up hanging out with him at the racetrack and his pit crew always treated me like one of their own. Don't get me wrong, I'm totally a girly girl. I love to do makeup, get my nails done, shop for the latest trends, and post selfies on Instagram. But given the choice between a hairbrush and a socket wrench, well, you can't fix a car with a hairbrush. The year I turned 16, my dad was in a terrible accident while racing. It was so hard for my mom to see him in the hospital, but I did the best I could to help by keeping my little brother and sister in line while she was visiting him. I cooked and cleaned, and sure, I hated it, but I had been raised with a pit crew mentality. Everyone pitches in. I missed my dad, and I couldn't wait for things to get back to normal. At night, I would watch NASCAR videos on my phone under the covers, dreaming of the day that it would be me driving. One day at school, our mechanics teacher said he was offering extra credit for anyone who wanted to work on fixing up an old car after class. My arm practically came out of my socket as I raised it to volunteer. The boy sitting next to me sneered. But you're just a girl. I took a wrench that I had in my zini purse and slammed it on his desk. Okay, flyboy, what kind of wrench is this? I was mad, but even though he was dressed in retro style, I couldn't help but notice his wavy blonde hair and steel blue eyes. He was kind of gorgeous. It was like I was watching a unicorn flip his mane in slow motion. I bet you're all thinking, focus girl, this guy is trouble with a capital WTH. And then he answered as if he was teaching me something. Torque wrench, I can show you how to use it if you need a lesson. Oh no, he didn't. The only lesson to learn here is how to get up from the floor when I knocked you out. The whole class laughed at him. He pushed his chair back and got in my face. Are we gonna fight? The class started cheering. Did they really want to see me fight this gorgeous, annoying unicorn? Hold on, was this guy my nemesis? Smart, gorgeous, and into cars? Just like me? The teacher stepped in front of me before anything could happen while he stormed out of class. I was sent to the office, and he got away. So unfair, right? As I was sitting in the office waiting, I spied him on the football field through the office window. His hood was up, but I knew it was him. I saw him hand another boy a small package in exchange for money. I had no idea what he was up to. I only knew that this is my school, and I had to protect it from bad guys doing shady things. Since you're an honor student, I'm letting you leave this time. But I don't want any more messes, and I will talk to Diego about this later. I thought if the principal wasn't going to take this seriously, I was going to figure out what this guy was really up to. After my next class, I was talking to some cute boys about our favorite subject, NASCAR, and they invited me to go dune buggy racing with them that weekend. Diego must have heard as he walked by. <laughs> dune buggy? I guess you can't drive a real car. I followed him to confront him about his rude comment and saw him walk off alone to a lunchroom table. He took a half-eaten apple out of his pocket and started eating it. I stopped myself from gagging at the thought of eating what looked like something you would find in the trash. Gross! I needed to let him know that I was watching his every move, so I walked by him and gave him a dirty look. What's the matter? Couldn't afford a whole apple? He stood up, and I thought, this is it. I'm going to wrestle him to the ground and search his pockets for evidence. Just then, my friends walked up to me, congratulating me for standing up to this bully earlier. But before they even noticed he was there, he put his hood over his head and darted away. We heard what you did, girl. Chalk one up for girl power. Girls can do anything. I was loving all the positive attention. I was, after all, the hero of this story. But I couldn't believe he didn't challenge me. I expected more of a fight from my mortal enemy. I was thinking that was the end of it. But the next day, I saw him leaning on a locker and talking to another boy and whispering. As soon as they saw me, they stopped and walked in the opposite direction. My spidey senses were tingling. After school, I waited, hiding under the bleachers to follow him home. I had to see for myself what the deal was. My phone rang, startling me, and I nearly jumped out of my skin. It was my mom. I whispered so that I wouldn't give away my hiding spot. Hi, Mom. I'm kind of busy right now. She asked me to pick up groceries on my way home. Um, I wanted to go to the library. Can I do it after? I felt bad lying to my mom, but I needed to have time to confront this worm, Diego. He came out the back door of the school, walked across the field to a hole in the fence, and slipped through. I gotta go. Love you. I followed him, and as I hid from sight, I saw him walk up to this small, broken-down house. Three little boys came running out to hug him. It was the first time he smiled all day. 
Hi, guys. Come on, let's get you into the house before... Just then, a loud car pulled up to the house, and Diego hurried the kids inside for safety. A very large, scary man leaned out of the window and just stared at Diego. Diego was clearly intimidated by this man. He dove into the house like he was trying out for the swim team. The car spun its wheels, screeching so loudly I had to cover my ears, and it took off down the street. But before it left, I managed to take a picture of the license plate. I knew he was up to no good, and now I had the proof. The next day after school, I waited for Diego again, but this time... I stopped him before he ducked through the gate. What are you doing here? What's going on? Are you breaking the law? Because we don't tolerate that in this school. I mean it, Diego. Why are you spying on me? Don't you have a life? I'm super connected at this school. I know everyone. And if you think that you're gonna... Okay, fine. I'll tell you, but just to get you off my back. <sighs> That's Leo. He keeps asking me to work for his chop shop where they steal and sell illegal car parts. I knew it. You're a criminal. Suddenly, he got really calm and touched my arm. We locked eyes, and for a second, I couldn't explain it. But I wanted to kiss him so badly. I know what you guys are thinking. Love him or hate him, girl, but pick a lane. No, my dad worked for him as a mechanic, but when he found out that Leo was a criminal, he quit. And now he harasses my family all the time because he knows we're poor, but I always say no. My dad raised me better than that. My mouth fell open like the Grand Canyon. I guess I never thought about him having good parents. I felt like the crumbs in the bottom of a toaster. I wish I could take back all the mean things I said, but instead, I kissed him. Yeah, I was as shocked as you were, and I was the one doing it. Are you crazy? First you embarrass me in class, then you follow me around like TMZ, and now you want to be my girlfriend? A <laughs> girlfriend? Slow down there, Flash. It was just a kiss. No, this is a kiss. He kissed me back, and after a second, he shot me a shy smile. But then I remembered why I was there. Hey, you're trying to distract me. Did it work? Never mind that. What was all that sneaking around school, handing people mysterious bags? If I didn't know any better, I'd say you were obsessed with me. You wish! Now answer the question. If you must know. He pulled up his sleeve and showed me a leather cuff around his wrist. I make these out of scraps and sell them. It's the only income I have since my dad isn't working.